is an FT on autopilot or on full throttle on the roads down the river. Roll the intro. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and welcome to another edition of HW Show Squared, episode 32, I think it is. Episode 32, yes. Uh, of course this is the show where we take the usual format or formula of the now defunct HW Show podcast and multiply it to the power of, you guessed it, two. Um, my name is Dan, DP, or as we all say nowadays, D P Z. yeah. Uh, and... Yeah, as you can see, once again, I am by myself. Um, but before we get into that, look at the new graphics. Look at them. They are sexy. Like, look at the, the way the outline is, the, the gradient. Everything's perfect. And thank you to the bastard for arranging these and getting these done for us. It has helped us so much. And it just made everything looks better. Like, I look better, which is quite a revenue for me to say. Uh, the show looks better. And... Yeah, let's just get into it as well. And, and a huge thanks to a Titan of Deity for the intro that you heard just a few moments ago. They're a great band. Go check them out. The link to Spotify should be in the description below. So please do check them out. They're, they're great what they do. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's just get into things, I guess. Um, you'll notice that Craig is not here once again. Uh, he's still on assignment, unfortunately. It just is a case of he'll be back when he's back. And um, until then, you've got me. Uh, you know, all reliable, all blue eyes. And boy, that's just a straight shooter with upper management written all over him. Ooh. Uh, even though I've got brown eyes, but regardless. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's just get into the show. Um, so here things off. This is an NXT for the 19th of March, 2024. Keep it off straight away with a match. Uh, Roxanne Perez and Tatum Paxley. Uh, Roxanne wins with the Pop Rocks, uh, which is up the code red. Uh, transitioned into a crossface submission for the submission victory. I rated one and a half stars. Um, it was okay. It was really short uh, and quite predictable. Um, Tatum did get in a couple of hope spots, but ultimately were too close to the PLA for marquee names to start losing matches on TV. Um, Roxanne afterwards demands that Ava ward her the NXT title because Lyra's not been around. And of course, out comes Lyra. Uh, she's in a sling, she brawls with Roxanne. Uh, Rox Rox Roxanne ultimately comes out on top though, uh, with, and potentially injures Lyra further. Um, I guess Lyra needed a big band for the big time show PLE. So Roxanne embracing this nastier side to her, this heel side of her essentially, makes sense. Uh, I hope Lyra's injury is not so serious, uh, so she can actually have a, and actually have a good match and defend the. Uh, the title or stand deliver, but we will see as time goes on. Uh, backstage, though, we get in the follow up. Uh, Lyra's in the medical room, and Ava approaches her to, to you know check on her. Uh, Lyra's incensed, but with a pur but with a purpose. She wants to rock stand and deliver, and to tell them to make the match happen. So, guess the injury is not as bad as we all thought it might have been. Uh, so yeah, that is confirmed the match. Um, or just the side thing here. You know, Roxanne utilizes the injury to r regain the title that she never thought that, that she feels like she never lost. Uh, it's definitely one of those one of those matches that's harder to predict for to to, to know who's winning. We go to in ring. Uh, Josh Briggs interrupts commentary to cut a promo on Overfemi. Uh, Briggs is annoyed that Overfemi destroyed Brooks Jensen with pride, with a smile on his face, with no respect or dignity. He calls out Overfemi to see if he can do the same to Briggs. How comes Overfemi? Uh, the only thing that matters to him is results. And he has his title already. That is the proof of the results that he wanted. Uh, Briggs requests a North American title match. Before Femi can give an absolute answer, out comes Dijak, and it's already becoming clear what's, happen what, what's coming or what's going to happen. Uh, Dijak declares that he already claimed the next spot, to which Briggs calls him a makeshift shaft. 
which for those who aren't aware, I'll put the picture up on the screen now of what Shaft is. It's a Samuel L. Jackson uh, movie, um, to which Dijak questions Briggs because he's white. Uh, <laughs> that is the word that Dijak used. That's not me saying it. That is what he said. Um, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed that. Um, a fight breaks out, which sees Briggs sent to the outside, and Dijak and Femi standing in the ring with no clear winner. But definitely not Briggs. Just saying. Like, you had Dijak and Femi in the ring, standing at all, and Briggs on the outside of the ring, because he got clotheslined over the top rope. So, Briggs is not really in the running there, in that little standoff. Uh, anyway, moving on to the WWE NXT Tag Team Titles qualification match between the team of Nathan Frazier and Axiom against the No Quarter Catch crew. Uh, which two? Um, they all wear their ring gear, so you couldn't just tell straight off who it was going to be. Uh, it, it turns out to be Charlie Dempsey and Miles Bourne. So, um, the match itself, uh, Nathan and Axiom win following an, an Avalanche Spanish Fly and Phoenix Clash on Miles Bourne. Uh, I rate this three and a half stars. Really good match. Great contrast of styles on display here. And you, as you had the high flying, flashy offense of Fraser, uh, Fraser and Axiom against the no nonsense technical grappling style of the NQCC, of which Dempsey did a great job of uh, showcasing himself. However, the weak link of, this here, of, the, of the match here was Miles Bourne, which is probably to be expected. Uh, but overall, roughly about 10 minutes of just great wrestling and the right team came out on top. I just worry about the freeway tag that's coming next week. Um, we then see a Twitter post from an anonymous source, so, you know, WWE Anonymous, uh, which showed Mr. Stone is angry at Von Wagner for carrying him out of the arena last week. Seems that there's trouble brewing there. Uh, backstage still, uh, an interview with the Wolf Dogs goes awry when Akira Tozawa and OS from Ratty and Dupree Interrupt and request a way into the tag team thing, uh, which an argument, uh, an agreement, sorry, is made that if they can beat the Wolf Dogs next week, then they'll be in the match at Stand and Deliver. Cool. Moving on now to the next match, it's a battle of the 90s uh, as surfer Sol Ruka takes on fitness guru Brindley Reese. Uh, Sol Ruka is supporting the Chris Statlander or the Steve Austin, wearing a very visible, very obvious knee brace. Uh, obviously from her year-long injury that she had, and she's back now, so that's great. Um, but in the battle of Fitness Guru and Surfer, Surfer comes out on top. Uh, Soruka wins with that finisher she has, that corner jumping 180 cutter thing. I put a little, I'll put a clip of it here so you know what I'm talking about, but it's a very weird move. It looks cool. It's definitely been improved upon because it used to be a lot of time wasted with it, and now it's a bit more, a bit more fluid. I don't know what it's called though. <laughs> um, one of the calls I rated this. Again, it was a similar boat to Roxanne and Tatum. Short match, wasn't bad. But, and to be honest, I think I enjoyed this more than I enjoyed the opening match. Aside from a couple of things, both competitors looked like they were normal on the shows. You couldn't tell that Ruka was, you know, just because of a year long injury, nor could you really tell that Brindley was, was fairly new to this whole thing. And it was, just, it, was, it was just a short match. And that's the main thing that that took away from it. Uh, it's to be looked though. This is obviously an exhibition match for Sol Ruka to build his own back up. Uh, and for the few that she has I'm coming with, the person who, who comes out afterwards, Blair Davenport, who attacks Sol Ruka and hits him with a Kamagoye, which of course means Kota Ibushi's coming to NXT soon. Hey you. Yeah, you. Do you like this video? There is a button. It's a very sexy button. It says subscribe on it. I wish I could click on it, but YouTube won't let me. Damn fuckers. Um, Pat Stage, uh, Gigi Dolan is talking with Fred Sinclair, which for those who aren't aware is Maddie Rankowski, and Gigi Dolan, for those who aren't aware, was Priscilla Kelly. Um, in comes Ariana Grace, though, to their conversation, who is literally the best thing going in NXT. Ariana Grace is amazing. Uh, she talks about the ref's decision is final because it benefited her uh, and how now she looks forward to bringing out the inner lady in Gigi or as Ariana would, would now call her Georgina. Uh, Gigi's understandably very confused by all this and to top it all off, Ariana presents her with a sash of her own which says Miss NXT in training which then places uh, over Gigi's head to wear on her shoulder. Uh, next few weeks of this should be interesting. Uh, Georgina Dolan Miss NXT in training, Sash. Uh, but yeah, moving on. Uh, we go to the family now. Uh, the family are here. So we've got the Don, Tony D'Angelo, 
the Riz who handles the biz, Andrew Hanna Rizzo, the underboss, Channing Stacks Lorenzo, and the new consigliere, Luca Crucifino. Uh, the family are in a boom of expansion, according to Tony. Uh, they brought in Luca, who's got a degree uh, from, a, I, think said, I think they said it was like UK or something like that. It was, I can't remember what the university was. Anyway, Tony then talks about how Ilya Dragunov is an unbreakable, unbeatable man, but Tony has supposedly proven that he can do the impossible, and he's ready for Ilya. Uh, Ilya interrupts on the big screen, the Titantron, uh, and he claims that the power of the NFT title is something that Tony that can't reach. It's something beyond Tony's uh, capabilities. Uh, Tony says that there's so much time before the PLE that anything can happen, and he's talked to Ava. And Ilya's got a match next week with Tony's underboss, Channing Stacks Lorenzo. So that is settled for next week. Uh, and that's the end of that, really. Uh, we'll move on next to the NXT Heritage Cup Trophy Championship Trophy Award Settlement thing. I don't know. Anyway, uh, challenger Riley Osborne, who is accompanied by Chase Yu, taking on the NQCC. But who? Um, obviously, Dempsey is the guy who won the trophy, so it makes sense if it was him. No, it's Drew Gulak. Um, Riley Osborne takes on Drew Gulak. Uh, and Osborne gets the first pin uh, after, a shoot, after a shoot and star splash in round one. So 1 0 Riley. Uh, Gulak then replies, pinned him with a catching flash pin uh, for the 1 1. Uh, round three almost ends in submission when Drew has a Dragon Sleeper locked in, but Riley does not give up or submit. And then finally, in round four, Drew Gulak pins Riley Osborne following interference from JC Jane and Jasmine Nix. Uh, so two one to Gulak for the victory and retaining the trophy for the NQCC. Uh, I rate it three stars. It was a weaker Heritage Cup match, and it was mainly due to the storyline interference from Jaden and, and Nix. But ultimately, it was still enjoyable. Gulak being the heel, but not really using underhanded tactics. Osborne being the underdog, but with all the movable parts in the match, it was going to be a hard, mat, hard task. Uh, and there was practically zero interference from the NQCC as well. So I enjoyed it, just not as much as I would have been, not as much as I have previous cup matches. Uh, backstage with Ava, when Fear Hale comes in, angry actions that have just transpired from uh, Nick's JC. Uh, and as a result of those actions, Jasmine will be in our first match next week against Fear Hale. Also, Duke Hudson will be in action next week, and if he wins, he'll potentially be in the NA in the North America title match as Stan Deliver, which Duke accepts. Fair enough. Uh, so we'll be we'll, we'll building our way towards Stand Deliver as well with the North River title, potentially getting more challenges. Uh, move on now to the NXT Tag Team title qualification match again, which is the third and final one of these matches to determine who will be in the freeway next week, or the week after, whatever it is. Um, the Good Brothers, uh, Luke Gallows and Kyle Anderson, take on Hank Walker and Tank Ledger. Uh, the Good Brothers win via Magic Killer. I rate it one star. Um, now that Craig's not here, I can deliver a fully accurate and truthful review. This was bad. It was slow. It was honestly quite painful to watch. Uh, Gallows and Anderson just aren't good. They're not. They're not adaptive. They they can't. They're not flexible. They're stubborn in their ways. You either work slow with them or you don't work with them at all. I feel bad for Hank and Tank because they're a team in development and they need time and they need an actual team to work with. Gaz Anderson is not that team. Uh, I don't know how to describe it. It was just very poor, the match. But yeah, we was win and they move on to the freeway, whatever it is. And the winners will face, will face the Wolf Dogs for the energy tag title that's had to deliver. Um... Backstage, uh, there's this, there's a mutual appreciation between JC Jane and Jasmine X with Kiana James and Izzy Dame. Uh, but as JC and Jasmine leave, uh, Kiana and Izzy are attacked by Kalani Jordan and Fallon Henley. So that's why I'm going to set up for the future as well. Um, we go on now to the main event. Uh, Noam Dar, who's here with Metaphor, taking on Trick Williams. Uh, Trick wins with the Trick Shot, which is that high flash knee that he does. It's got a name now. I don't know how long it's had that name. I might have missed it. But I have no idea. Anyway, he wins with that. I rate the match three and three quarter stars. Honestly, great TV main event. Trick Williams, the quintessential protagonist of NXT, coming up against an opponent of Noam Dar's caliber. Someone who's got also all that experience as well, and also a lot longer, being in NXT and NXT UK longer than Trick Williams has. Uh, 
this was the perfect tune-up match though for, for Trick for the PLA. Also, the fact that Noam relied more on his traditional wrestling style than relying on outside interference from Oro Mensa or Blast Legend, Jakara Jackson made it, it made the match even better. I hope Noam moves on though to North American title like stuff following like the, the PLE because he deserves so much more than a run with something that's not the Heritage Cup. Uh, after the match though, uh, Trick called out Carmelo Hayes and out comes the security that you know are with Carmelo Hayes and they kept alluding to during the match before where it's like, oh Carmelo's here, oh he's in the locker room, oh there's security, he's here. Um yeah, they, he calls he calls out Carmelo, out comes the security, they surround the ring, uh, and then out comes Carmelo, uh, who comes out and you can see the beard, but you can't see the hair because he's got the hood on. Uh He's really milking it for a little bit, and then suddenly it pans back to the ring where one of the security guards are taking off the mask. It's Carmelo in the security outfit, and then he takes out uh, Chip Williams with a bicycle knee uh, following the sneak attack. The final shot of NXT this week is Carmelo standing over a knocked out trick. In fact, you could say Carmelo whooped that trick. Uh, ultimately, though, that was the end of NXT. That was the end of the show, and that's the end of... Not the end of this review, but it's the end of that show, and I can imagine my thoughts. Uh, ultimately, it was a fine episode. Um, it kind of felt a bit like autopilot again. It it's just I don't know what it is. Like they do it a lot with like Raw and uh, Raw and do that do that same thing. So the AW. It's when you get towards a pay view, you sort of enter autopilot because you you know, you know what you're booking, you know what you've got to do to get there. It's just it's not interesting to watch. Um, like, we know three matches that are coming. We know we've got Ilya Tony, we've got Lyra Roxanne, and Carmelo Trick, which, which is so far a great card. You add in what is going to be most likely going to be the Wolf Dogs against uh, the, 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 good, the Good Brothers. I don't care. Then you can add in what's going to be probably a triple threat match for the North American title between Oberfemi, Dian Jack, and Josh Briggs. Which should be okay, but again, not too bothered about it. Um, but yeah, other than that, the, the card looks alright. It's just I don't know that it's hard to explain. It you got your good matches like the standouts for me were that tag match with Frazier and Axiom, not the Good Brothers because not not them, not them. Uh, the Frazier and Axiom against uh, the NQCC that was a good match, and then also the main event Noam Dar Trick Williams, which is also a good match. Everything else was sort of short and didn't really feel like it got the right time to showcase what it was and and how the and how the competitors were in the match and. Showing off what they could do. It was just Yeah, I think they're an all pilot right now until they get to Sand Deliver and then after Sand Deliver we'll, we'll go back to what we are used to seeing within NXT, which is quality TV, on a quality basis. Uh we get some, some character work as well on the show, but ultimately again it's just autopilot. And hopefully that changes soon. Uh but we'll see going forward. Um and that reason enter this review. Uh as always, uh, please give us a follow on our social medias below, which are below me here. So we have our, our Instagram, our Facebook, our, uh, our X, and our Twitch, which is uh, there. There it is. Um, and as, if you're, so, if you're so, so inclined, you can give me a follow on Twitter as well, which is just here, DeBreezy. Uh And that's about it, really. Um, you know, just go live your lives. <laughs> it's the end of the show. Uh, I've got nothing more to say. I've been Dan, DP, DeBreezy. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.